Welcome to our lecture online. In order to understand uncertainties a little bit better, let's go through this example right here. So let's say we're trying to measure this object. It has a length and a width, and we're then trying to calculate the area of that particular object by simply multiplying the length times the width. Now we made the measurement of the length and it came out to be 24.5 centimeters, but because there was some uncertainty in there, we figured there's about a half a centimeter of uncertainty, so therefore it's 24.5 centimeters plus or minus 0.5 centimeters of uncertainty. Same with the width, we measured it to be 14.5 centimeters, but the uncertainty was about a half a centimeter, so we wrote plus or minus 0.5 centimeters. Now, what is the area of this table? If the numbers that we got were absolutely accurate and we knew that there was no uncertainty whatsoever, if we knew that the length was exactly 24.5 centimeters and we knew that the width was exactly 14.5 centimeters, the area would then be calculated as follows. This would then be 24.5 centimeters multiplied times 14.5 centimeters. And now we grab a calculator and we then say that 24.5 times 14.5, and we get 355.25 centimeters. 355.25 centimeters. Now, first of all, since we only had three significant figures here, and we have three significant, significant figures here, we should then say, well, this is really equal to 355 centimeters and drop the 0.25 because those are definitely not significant. However, we knew that there was some uncertainty in the numbers. This number could be as high as 25 and as low as 24. This number could be as high as 15 and as low as 14. So what is the uncertainty in the final area? Well, the way we can figure that out is, first of all, add the uncertainty to each of the two numbers, then find the area, on the, that would be the area on the high side, then subtract uncertainty from both numbers, and then multiply again, that would be the area on the low side, and then you know the range of the possible area. Unfortunately, since there's some uncertainty in the measurement, there's going to be some uncertainty in the area calculated. So on the high side, let me put my calculator down, so on the high side, the area is going to be equal to the length times the width, which in this case is going to be 25 centimeters because it could be as high as 25 centimeters, we're just not certain, times 15 centimeters because again it could be as high as 15 centimeters, we're not quite certain. When you multiply the two numbers together, you get 300, oh and wait a minute, since I'm multiplying this should be of course square centimeters, not linear centimeters. And here this would be 375 centimeters squared. So notice if the numbers were absolutely correct and there's no certainty at all, we know that the area then would be 355 square centimeters. But it could be as high as 375 because there's a certain amount of uncertainty in it. 375 is 20 bigger than 355, we just don't know. On the low side, the area is equal to the length times the width, which is equal to, well, it could be as low as 24 centimeters for the length and it could be as low as 14 centimeters for the width and if we multiply that gets 240 uh, that 320 that 336 I believe I better go calculate it out 24 times 14 uh, oop, let me try again 24 times 14 that gives 336 so it would be 336 square centimeters and that would be 19 less than the value I would get if the numbers were absolutely correct and there was no uncertainty at all all right, so this is 20 centimeters, 20 square centimeters greater. And this would be, that would be plus 20 and minus 19 centimeters, square centimeters smaller. So the proper way to write the answer, because it could be 20, centimeter, 20 square centimeters bigger or 19 square centimeters smaller, the correct way to answer that is that the area, therefore, is equal to the nominal value of 355 centimeters squared plus or minus this is 20, this is 19, just round it up to the largest number, plus or minus 20 centimeters squared, and that would then be the proper answer for this particular problem. That means that you really don't know, you know that it's somewhere between 375 and 335 square centimeters for the best that you can do based upon the uncertainty you had in your two measurements. 
It's kind of odd when you think about it that only a small uncertainty in the length and a small uncertainty in the width can actually result in a fairly large uncertainty in the area once you start using the numbers and start multiplying these numbers together. But that is absolutely something we need to do if you do laboratory experiments and you have uncertainties in your measurement, then when you calculate things such as the volume, the area, and things like that, you do have to take into account the uncertainty, and you do have to account for it. All right? and that's how we do that. Now, there are some methods that make it straightforward. When you multiply, divide, add, and subtract, there's specific methods on how to do that, a little bit easier than this. And in the next video, I will show you how to do the calculations for adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing when you have uncertainties in your measurements so that when you then work out the results in your laboratory, you can actually get the proper way of writing the answer. And that's how we do that.